In this lesson, we're going to learn how to take experimental data and determine the formula of a hydrated salt. So in this case, we're going to try and figure out how many moles of water it takes um, to incorporate into the crystal lattice structure of sodium carbonate. That is, how many waters for every one mole of sodium carbonate. To do so, what we're going to need is the mass of our hydrated crystal, the crystal with the water in it, before we heat it. By simply heating a hydrate, you should be able to drive off the water. And if you liberate the water, you're going to create a salt without the water, called an anhydrous salt. So this lab is pretty easy to actually do. So you're going to need two masses. You're going to need the mass of the hydrated crystal before you heat it, and the mass after heated, the anhydrous salt. So let's take a look at some experimental data. We're going to start off by heating a hydrated salt. And the mass of our hydrated salt here it's going to be 2.714 grams. And upon heating this hydrated salt, we're going to liberate the water. We're going to drive it off. Now, not all hydrates, simply by heating them, will allow you to drive off the water. But quite a few of them can. So we're going to take advantage of the few hydrates that, um, when you do heat them, you can liberate the water. And in this case, we're going to form an anhydrous salt. That is a salt without the water. And that mass here is going to be the 1.006 grams of the sodium carbonate. So if we get the difference between the mass of the hydrated salt, the salt with the water, and then over here the salt without the water, the anhydrous salt, we're obviously going to be able to get the mass of the water liberated. So if we go ahead and subtract the two here, we're going to get the mass of the water. And the mass of the water here is 1.708 grams. Now that we have the mass of the anhydrous salt and the mass of the water that's liberated, we can simply set up a ratio between the two to figure out how many waters were initially embedded within that crystal lattice structure of that salt. Now to be able to compare the water that was liberated to the salt now without the water, um, we need to be in the right unit. And that unit happens to be moles. So we're going to take the 1.06 grams of the anhydrous sodium carbonate and the amount of water that was liberated and we're going to change these units to moles. To change grams to moles all you have to do is add up a molar mass. So if we add up the molar mass for the anhydrous salt for the sodium carbonate on our periodic table the atomic mass of sodium is 23 for carbon the atomic mass is 12 and for oxygen that is 16. So if we take advantage of those numbers we can say 2 times 23 plus 12 plus 3 times 16. And if you add all that up, that will be the molar mass of your sodium carbonate. And molar mass has units of grams per mole. And we can do the same thing for the water. Each of the hydrogens is worth 1. And the oxygen is worth 16. So if we take the mass of the anhydrous salt and the water, and we divide by the molar masses, and for sodium carbonate, that's going to add up to be 106. For the water, that adds up to be 18. Notice once again the units when you add up a molar mass using your periodic table, those units are grams per mole. So if you take the grams and divide by grams per mole, that's going to leave you with moles. So we now have moles of sodium carbonate and moles of water. Now we're in the unit that we need to be able to compare those two. Now we're in moles. So now it's pretty easy. We just have to identify of those two mole values which one is the smallest. That's obviously the sodium carbonate here. It's smaller than the water value in terms of the moles you see in front of you. So what we're going to do now is simply divide the sodium carbonate and the water value by the smaller number of moles. So we're going to divide them both now by the point zero zero nine four nine. And upon doing so, when we divide through, um, we're going to be able to see how many moles of water we need for every one mole of sodium carbonate. Because obviously anything divided by itself is one. So we're going to see for sodium carbonate, we're going to need a ratio of 1 mole of sodium carbonate to 10 moles of water. Because when you divide the 0.0949, the initial moles of water, by the moles of the sodium carbonate, that obviously gives you 10. So if you want to get the ratio between the water and an anhydrous salt, all you have to do is take the mass of the water, the mass of the sodium carbonate, change it to moles, that's what you see in front of you here, and then divide by the smallest and you're always going to get a ratio of waters to one mole of anhydrous salt. So we actually want to write a formula here for the um, sodium carbonate with water attached. We would now simply 
show the formula with the 10 waters embedded in. So we just solve for x, that was 10. So what we see here is the formula is Na2CO3 dot 10H2O. This would be sodium carbonate decahydrate.